The Nature Way Video and Audio Corporation presents The Disappearing Native Grasslands. Copyright 2018, all right reserved. Many people do not know that Texas is a prairie state. In the past, 75% of Texas was covered in beautiful prairie and savanna. The native tall grass prairie was a lush green environment. Like an immigrant from England, John Brooke wrote about in 1848, It was the finest sight I ever saw. Immense meadows and two or three feet deep of fine grass and flowers. Such beautiful colors I never saw. Today, more than 150 years later, this beautiful landscape that Mr. Brooks described is endangered. Hi, my name is Christian Abel, I'm 12 years old, I'm in the Infinity 4-H Club, and I chose this topic because me and my family raise cows and goats on a restored native tall grass prairie in Northeast Texas. My favorite game is playing hide-and-go-seek on a ranch with my brother and friends. The tall grass prairie provides good places to hide with my friends, but of course, the native tall grass prairie is much more than just fun. The tall grass prairie supports pollinators, the tall grass prairie eliminates erosion, and the tall grass prairie supports of lots of plants, animals, and bacteria. Today, sadly, less than 1% of the natural prairie remains in the Great Southern Plains. I'm going to talk about why prairies are disappearing, the ecology, livestock, and what you can do to save the prairies with livestock, and what I hope the prairies will look like in the future. Think of how the view of Texas has changed as Mr. Brooks described it in 1848. Immense meadows and two or three feet deep of fine grass and flowers. Such beautiful colors I never saw. At the turn of the century, the population of Texas was 3 million. Now the population is over 27 million, according to the United States and Texas population. In fact, there are almost 1,200 people coming into Texas each day. Obviously, the human population growth has impacted the tall grass prairie. The disappearing prairie is mainly a consequence of people's efforts to try to provide for their families. Grazing and farming practices and urban development have all taken their toll. Are we going to let this last bit of prairie vanish? Maybe people don't understand how valuable the prairie is to the environment. First, we need to think about a prairie ecosystem. What is an ecosystem? The Webster's definition is a system made up of a community of animals, plants, and bacteria in its interrelated physical and chemical environment. The native prairie has a healthy ecosystem. It absorbs carbon and keeps it in its roots so it doesn't contribute to global warming. The prairie offers a good place for pollinators. It provides flowers for the butterflies, the bees, the wasps, and the blister beetles to live. If it weren't for the prairie flowers, a record number of bees would decrease rapidly. The prairie offers homes for prairie chickens and birds like the meadowlark, bobwhite quail, and the dick sisal, a small grassland bird that builds its nest in the tall grass prairie. The prairie also helps with erosion. Did you know that the tall grass prairie can absorb 8 inches of water in just under an hour? The prairie also offers a huge help to reservoir sedimentation. The prairie has a healthy soil ecology with lots of good bacteria that enrich the soil. The prairie has a very good pH level. It even regulates its own pH. We need to restore more of the prairie back to its natural state for the ecosystem. The American public wants results right now, but the process takes time. You have to be patient. If you have native prairie, you can have a healthy ecology and run cattle on it as well. Hundreds of years ago, the Native American and the bison roamed freely across the prairie landscape. The native prairie offers a huge benefit to livestock producers because you can mimic the buffalo by moving your cows in different pastures. This is called rotational grazing. I learned from my dad that rotational grazing is important so that each plant gets a break to regrow. This is similar to how the migrating buffalo grazed. You can reestablish the prairie by planting native grass seeds with your cows. You can use your cows to trample plant the native seed just like the buffalo. The buffalo would knock the seeds off the tall grass, and the buffalo behind them would trample the seeds into the ground. This would plant a new colony of grass. Today, 
Some farmers and ranchers graze their pastures too hard, which results in overgrazing. This hurts the native prairie species. We need to get the word out that rotational grazing is necessary to give one patch of grass a break in order to rebuild itself. My dad told me another benefit of producing livestock on native grass is that you do not have to feed hay. If you stockpile native grass in the winter, you just need a protein supplement. In the past, the Native Americans would burn the prairie, and that's what kept the brush out. This would give the prairie open sunlight to grow. You can burn your pastures in the winter, and in the spring, your native grasses will come back green and lush. The cows will munch on the new green sprouts, which have lots of protein. Many pastures today only have one species of grass growing, like introduced fescue or Bermuda. The prairie has a diverse species that supported lots of different bugs and wildlife. In fact, every high acre quality prairie has 200 to 300 different kinds of wildflowers and grasses, which are native to the American prairie. What we can do in the future? We need to educate our farmers and younger generations on the prairie and act before it disappears. The farmers and ranchers need to know how important the prairie really is to the livestock and ecosystem. They can buy native grass seed, spread it on their farms, and get their cows to trample plant it. Younger generations need the awareness so that when they grow up, they will find more ways to restore the prairie. The Missouri Prairie Foundation is finding ways to incorporate young kids in some of their projects. We hope on our property in Northeast Texas, we can incorporate more kids, like me, in some of our projects, seeding, trample planting, and prescribed burns. Education about the prairie is important so that people will have the knowledge about how to restore the prairie. Today, I talked about why prairies are disappearing, the main problems are grazing, farming practices, and urban sprawl. I also discussed that the healthy ecology of the prairie and its benefits to the environment are coming with erosion, water, and soil conservation, and carbon storage. Texas prairie once covered 20 million acres. Today, 99% of it is gone. Yet the 1% remaining of the strong ecosystem continues to provide benefits we cannot afford to lose. In the future, I hope to see a cross-Texas landscape more acres restored back to green, lush, tall grass prairie, properly managed with happy cattle and prescribed burning to keep the brush down. I also hope to see more bird life and pollinators like the monarch butterfly that our healthy prairies will bring back. I would like to thank everyone who cares about the prairie, especially the land stewards who are trying to save every last bit of the tall grass prairie. I really hope you can help too. Thank you.